So in the last lesson, just to kind of remember what we were doing, we spoke about how to find the mean, the mode, and the median. And these are all basically measures of where the middle of the data is. But out of these three, probably the most tricky one to work out was the median. And that's because you have to rank the data from smallest to biggest before you can find the median. And then what you have to do is you have to actually find the position of the number you're looking for. And so what we did was we first used the formula the position formula to find the position in the list where n is the number of items in my data set. And then we learned how to find by counting through the data set what the median was. What the median does is it divides the data up into the, basically it's the halfway point between the lower 50% and the upper 50%. Give me a thumbs up if that is sounding familiar to you from Monday. Um, give me a thumbs down and maybe some of our new students, if you are um, feeling a bit like, whoa, what's this man with position Q2 and Q2? Um, Q2 is another way of writing the median. So basically that was last time. Now in statistics or data handling, we often want to know where the middle of the data is, but we also want to know, compare different data sets and know how spread out they are. So the fancy word that we use for that is measures of dispersion or measures of spread. So basically, it's like saying, if you've got two data sets, how do you know if one is all closer together and one is further apart? And so there's different statistics that we learn how to calculate. The simple, the easiest measure of how spread our data is, is the range, which is just max minus min. Then today, we're going to learn about something called the interquartile range. And in order to calculate that, we need to kind of find um, something called the quartiles, which we're going to start with now. I'm not sure if we have time today, but percentiles are also something that are helpful in this section. And then another measure of how spread our data is, is the standard deviation, which I will explain later. And we can use our calculator to help us with that. So that's kind of where we're going for today. So let's start with some basics. The range of this data set. I want everyone to tell me, this is a data set that I have got for you. Tell me in the chat, what is the range of this data set? What is the range of this data set? Okay, so we just went, max minus min and 25 was the biggest four was the smallest and so the range is the first measure of how spread out something is now that the problem with the range is that if you have what's called an outlier or you have a value that is a human error value the range is very easily affected by just one bad value one value that isn't truthful and so when we uh, develop statistics, we need measures that are more robust or aren't as easily broken by one little human error, because in the real world, human errors happen all the time. So what we do is we talk about something called the interquartile range. And in order to do that, we need to find the quartiles. And the quartiles are what I'm going to call Q1. Actually, let me just move some space here. Q1, uh, Q2 and Q3. And in order to find these, remember we said before that the Q2 is actually a code word for the median. And what the median is, the median halfway through the data set. So let's start by calculating the median for this. But in order to find the median, I first have to find the position of the median. So the position formula is a half times n plus 1, and n in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have a half times 10 plus 1, which is going to give us what? It's going to give us 5.5. So that's the position. I then count 
one, two, three, four, five, six. So the median for Q2 is halfway between here. And so what is the value of my median gonna be? It's simply gonna be 17 plus 18 divided by two, which is 17.5. So, and the reason it's 17.5 is that I don't have an exact position. It's halfway between. Now, using that same idea, I want us to find the first quartile. And the first quartile is a quarter of the way through the data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the position formula for the first quartile. And the position formula is gonna be a quarter times N plus one. Now, before we worry about finding the value of Q1, I want you to find me the position of Q1 using what's on the screen. So go ahead, do the calculation. What is the position of Q1? Pop it in the chat. So we have to go a quarter times 10 plus one. And now the problem is that we need to make sure that we use our calculator. So we get 2.75. Now, 2.75 is not an exact value. So where is it going to be visually? It's going to be between the second and the third item. Now, for quartiles, we don't round off to the nearest one. We just average them out. Okay, so if this is the position, I want to know now what is the value of Q1. So the position is here. What is the value of Q1? And remember, it's sitting between the two values. So now this is important. With quartiles, we just average them out. Okay. I know that's a bit odd and, and there's a bit of a difference, but that's the convention that most schools are following. So we're going to go with that. And all we need to do is say it's between the two. So what's 12 plus 13 divided by two? It's just going to be 25 divided by two. So this is going to be 12.5. Give me a thumbs up if you followed how I got 12.5. Give me a thumbs down if you feel a bit lost about that. Okay. So you don't round off, no. So quartiles, you simply average out between the two nearest values. So that is the rule that we're following. I know it's, it's somewhat debatable in terms of some, but the majority of schools I've seen have used the, the um, averaging out. Uh, Sadiq, can we unmute Sadiq? Sadiq, just check. All right. Okay. Hi, Sadiq. Can you hear me? Hello. Hey, how can I help? Oh, I understand. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Well, that is good news. Okay. Well, then let's move on to Q3. Now, in order to find Q3, Q3 is three quarters of the way through the data. So it's probably going to be somewhere up here. But we're going to follow a position formula. So that's why I say POS, Q, position formula, and we get 3 over 4 times N plus 1. I want you to find me the position of Q3. And then after you found the position, I want you to find me the value of Q3. I'm not too sure if Bianca has a question, but I'll unmute okay. her. Okay, Bianca, so unmute Bianca. Go, go ahead. Hi, Bianca. Can you, can Hi, you hear me? Hey. I wanted to ask, how did you get Q1? Okay. So first of all, I do the position calculation, and I'm using this formula a quarter times N plus 1. That is something that I learned because it's the first quartile. Are you okay with that bit? Yes, sir. Can, perfect. Okay, now, the other thing I'm using 
is this 10. So I'm actually counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that is why there are 10 items here. Now, if I use my calculator and go quarter times n plus 1, that is the position of Q1, but it's not the actual value. So I go and I count position 1, position 2. Now here's position 3. Q1 must be between position 2 and 3. And so what we do is we average out between 12 and 13. So the same thing is going to happen here. So can you tell me um, what is 3 quarters times 10 plus 1 or 3 quarters times 11? What do you get for that? Um, so I don't have my calculator nearby. Okay. Does anybody else, I'm getting, I'm looking in the, in the thing and I'm seeing 8.25. So let's go with 8.25. So that is the position of this Q3 value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and now 8. Now I need to be somewhere between the eighth and the ninth position. So I think Q3 is going to be here. Now, what do you think Q3 is going to be in this scenario? It's going to be in between the 22 and the other 22. Exactly. But because they're the same value, if you average them out, what are you going to get? Um... So all you're going to get is you're going to get 22. So because they're the same value, if you add them together, you're going to get 44. And if you divide them by two again, you get back to 22. Okay. Uh, We're going to do yes. a couple of these examples though. So don't worry. This is just the first round. We're going to practice plenty. But now that we've done, we found the quartiles. The first quartile is 25% of the way through the data. Q2 is halfway through. Q3 is 75% of the way through the data, and there's 25% above. Now, the whole point of doing this was to find something called the IQR, which is basically a measure of the middle 50% of the data. The IQR is basically the distance between these two. Can you guys find me the interquartile range? It's, it's basically like the the goalposts that hold the middle 50% of the data. So what is my interquartile range going to be? Where was Q3? Q3 was 22. And Q1 was 12.5. So what are we going to get for that? So it looks to me like we are going to get 9.5. Okay. So what that is telling us is that 50% of the data is falling within nine and a half units. So that's useful because if your interquartile range is small, it means that the data, 50% um, of the data is packed nice and closely. If, if your interquartile range is big, it means the middle 50% of the data is quite spread out. And that's a useful thing in statistics. Now, just to extend one step further, to get something called the semi-interquartile range, which is just whatever the interquartile range is divided by two. So what is the semi-interquartile range in this scenario? What is my semi interquartile range going to be? Pop it in the chat. So I take 9.5 divided by 2 and I get 4.75. Okay, awesome. So that is the very first example that we've done around the interquartile range and finding the quartiles in the range. We are now going to move on to a second one where you guys are going to do more of the work yourself. And then I'm going to take questions while you work on this. So let me tell you what you need to do. 
here is a lovely data set. I will leave working up on the screen and I'm going to help you out. I'm going to be a nice teacher and I'm going to give you what N is, the number of items. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay. N is 22. The data is ranked from smallest to biggest. I want you to find me the range, the interquartile range, and the semi interquartile range. And what I'm going to suggest is that you start, well, let's do the range first all together. So step one, everyone find me the range. The range is normally the simplest measure of um, how spread out the data is. And so the best one is 30, the smallest one is nine. So I think the range is just 21. Okay, no problem, piece of cake. To find the interquartile range, you are going to have to find Q1, Q2, and Q3. And so what I'm going to do to help you is I'm going to give you the position formulas, and you are then going to have to find me the quartiles and then use that um, to help you do the other ones. So um, sometimes they write it as two over four times n plus one. And that's three over four. So over to everyone else. If you have a question, please ask. But next up, I, what I want from you is the interquartile range. If you like, you can give me your quartiles as you go. And over to you guys. I'm going to be quiet for a bit and there's questions from the students. My calculator, where is it hiding? Two. Eleven point five. Oh, wait, that's not 11.5. I've done something wrong there. So 23 times 0.25575. So this is going to be position 5.75. This is going to be position 11.5. And this is going to be position 17.5. Now, this is not a value. So sometimes I even add a TH to remember that it's a position. Uh, or a T way. Can we unmute or a T way? I see that there is a question. Uh, awesome. Hey, how can I help? Uh, so, no, I understand, I understand. I was going to ask how you got the even uh, comma five for the first one. But I, you said you made an error, I understand, because I got 5.75. Perfect. Perfect. We're on the on the right track. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm guessing Q1 has to be there. Well, not guessing, working out again. <laughs> uh, and then Q2, 11.5. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So it's going to be halfway between there, but that's rather convenient. And Q3. 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Q3 must be here. So I get um, halfway between 12 and 15. And then this one is going to be a straight 22. And this is going to be, that's going to be 13.5. 22, and then this is going to be 26.5. So what is my interquartile range? And what is my semi-interquartile range? That is the question, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I know that this is just Q3 minus Q1. So let's just do that, I guess, Q3. minus Q1, which is 26.5 minus 13.5, which is 13. So the middle 50% of the data or the interquartile range is sitting, is 13 units big. And then the semi-interquartile range is just going to be 13 divided by 2, which is 6.5. Okay, now it is a little bit like, you know, there's a little bit of mundaneness to it, but once you understand how the position formula works, this is a glorious section for marks. So give me a thumbs up if you followed general process, give me a thumbs down if you're still, if you're feeling a bit unsure about the process that we follow. Just want to get a quick room, I can't always see you all the time, I can see some of you, but it helps me to get a feel for the room. If you vote honestly, fantastic. Okay, keep those votes coming. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to find me the interquartile range for this multiple choice question, and then we are gonna have a break. So last question before the break, what is the interquartile range for the this multiple choice question? I will help you by counting one, two, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So in this case, N is 20. And the data is ranked from smallest to biggest. I want you to find me just the interquartile range, the option. In order to do that, I'm going to suggest you need to find Q1. Actually, you don't even need to find Q2. In reality, all you need to find is Q1 and Q3. I was doing Q2 just to show you, but in reality, you just need to find Q1 and Q3. So you go ahead and you work out what you think is the correct answer. And I will answer questions as, as needed. And I know there are some students, I can see that there's a few thumbs down. So I'd really encourage you to maybe put your hand up when we have a bit of a chat. I'm sure I can help you through on this example. Um, or maybe put a, put a question in the chat and then show me where I can help. Because one of the lovely things about Watobi is, you know, we have this interactivity. Uh, and so that can be helpful. And you also, you can help other students when you ask questions. Now, I like that I see in the chat, there's some disagreement around A's and B's and, and things like that. So I think we're going to have to do the hard work. So this first one is going to be 5.25 for its position. And this one is going to be 15.75. Now that is not the value. That is the position in the list. So I go one, two, three, four, five. So I like doing this. I actually literally put a Q1 there. And I go six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then there is my Q3. So it looks to me like Q1 is halfway between nine and 11, which is 10. And Q3 is halfway between 31 and 33, which is 
32. And now we have Q3 and Q1. So how, what is our interquartile range? So we have to go um, 32 minus 10, which is 22. And if I scan the options here, I see that 22 is where I wanna be. Okay, so again, as we end the first half of the lesson, we have been looking at how do we measure how spread out the data is. And we can see that the interquartile range in this example is 22. This means the middle 50% of the data is sitting in a range of 22. And comparing interquartile ranges, if we have two different data sets and we compare the interquartile ranges, give us a good sense of, of how spread out the data is and which one is more spread out and which one isn't. And that's why we're learning this today. But we have done enough maths for now. So it is now time for some exercise and some chance to stand up. So turn on your camera if you haven't done so already. I do so enjoy seeing my fellow Watobians joining in. Um, and let's just start by standing up. No sitting now. And what we're going to start with is we're just going to start by taking some nice deep breaths, swinging our arms and looking into the distance so that your eyes have a chance to focus on something other than a screen. So just give yourself a chance to relax with your eyes and then look into the other corner so that you are basically, and you can roll your shoulders a bit while you're doing this. And we're just giving our chance eyes a chance to kind of um, unwind and we can roll our shoulders forward and then maybe a little bit of a twist so start with a little bit of rotation and then as you relax you should find your muscle allow you to twist a little bit more you should hear a couple of clicks if you're lucky if you're like a windmill anyway Okay, let's take three deep breaths. So, take another deep breath. Take one more deep breath. Okay, uh, let's do some stretches for our shoulders. So, a nice tricep stretch. Look up with a nice a straight up posture and feel it burning a little bit at the back. And then switch to the other arm. Okay. And then just shake your arms out. And uh, maybe shake your, take your wrists a little bit. Let them loosen up. Okay. Now we want to get our heart rate up. So the blood moves around our body. And we are going to do some virtual skipping. We are going to do 20 virtual skips. So you've got your virtual skipping book, and let's go. One, two, three. Awesome. I am loving all the Watobians in the camera feeds doing the exercise, I promise you, it will help you with your learning. It's not just us having, well, maybe it is us having fun, but it is also helpful to the learning process. So here is a little brain break. Um, what do you think a triangle is worth? So here's, here's the puzzle. It's made up of geometric pieces. What do you think a triangle is worth. <laughs> so I agree, Mdudu, that the first bit, a circle is definitely worth five. So thank you for that tip. 
Now, remember with bod mass, multiplication has to be done before addition. So what do we think a square is going to be? Two. Ah, oh, nice, nice, nice. I agree that is going to be a two. So what is a triangle going to be? Who is going to claim the victory here? Now, remember, bod mass is involved. Bod mass says this stuff must get done and that stuff must get done before I do the subtraction. What is five times two? I think five times two is 10. So we need to go 10 minus something gives us five. Okay, Kishani has, I think, and so is Annie, it is one, yes, because it, we need to have 10 minus five does equal five. And the only way we get a five is if that's a one. And so the final answer is a one. All right. So I thought I would mix it up today. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. Um, and a lot of these puzzles have a pattern and you take one bit, you solve it and you feed it into the next bit. It kind of feels a bit like Sudoku. Uh, and so I hope you enjoyed that. Cool. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. So I think what I want to do is I'm just going to do two multiple choice questions quickly with you. So let's do the first one. Find me. Let's put that one down for the moment. Find me Q1 for this data set. It's a little bit of a small data set. That's fine. Uh, find me Q1 for this data set, which is the lower quartile. So whenever we want to find Q1, we first have to find its position. So don't forget that. Still on. So this is seven, um, N is seven. So we go seven plus, what am I doing? Keep the position separate from the actual value. So it's in the second position. Now, what value is the second position? It's actually exact on the value. So it's seven. And so Conke and uh, Nia, I agree with you. We are, seven is the correct value. And notice how it didn't have, it doesn't always fall exactly between the, the value. Sometimes it lands exactly. And so we say that, Basically from here, that's the lower 25%, that's the upper 75% of the data. I think you guys are getting this. Let's do one more like this. Find me the upper quartile for that data set. Oops. Find me the upper quartile for that data set. No, is it? Oh, wait, there's something sneaky, guys. I just noticed something. There's something sneaky. Who notices the sneakiness? Can someone help me? Kukotso, what do you notice about this one? The data is not in an ascending order. So perfect. We have Nailed to it. So put it in an ascending order before you can start doing anything. Yep, exactly that. It almost caught me. <laughs> and then I was like, hold on. The whole idea of the quartiles is, is based on the idea that the data is arranged from smallest to biggest. So you first have to arrange it from smallest to biggest, which is, let me just make sure, one, two, three, four, N is six. And that almost got me. So watch out. Thank you. What do we think the correct answer is going to be for this one? So I'm going to go position Q3 is the 
Oh, what's that going to be? Seven times point. Oh, the position is 5.25. I count one, two, three, four, five. But you're averaging out between these two, so the correct answer must be 150. Okay. Let's do another thumbs up, thumbs down vote. If you're feeling okay with the content, give me a thumbs up. If you're feeling not so good or a bit unsure, give me a thumbs down. Helps to just gauge the class. Okay. So, awesome. Yeah. Uh, can you help me find the standard deviation of the graph? Okay, that's what's coming next. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> okay, so I then want us. To, I want to be able to do it because I have an homework for that one. Okay. And they Let's took me by calculator, but I forgot how to do it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so let me... Let me quickly share my screen so you can see the calculator. And let's go to calculator land. So another measure, and it, it looks a bit fancy, but this is thing called the standard deviation. And it's a measure of how spread out the numbers are. It basically measures how far on average something is from the middle. So a sort of basic English interpretation is how far on average is the data from the mean? Instead of saying the mean, you can also think of it as the middle. So how far on average is the data from the mean or from the middle? That's what the standard deviation measures. But let's actually learn how to actually find that calculation first. Uh, or a Tiwe, what is your question? Uh, uh, what do you mean by how far? Will they give us a specific number and ask us how far, let's say, uh, three, six, uh, 350 is or how okay. far it is from the middle? Or... Okay, so let me show you the calculation first. Um, it's basically a measure. If, if data is generally quite close to the middle, we say it's not very spread out. If yes, data I is on average further away from the middle, then we say it is more spread out and it'll have a higher standard deviation. So a low standard deviation means the data is clustered very close. Whereas yeah. um, if the data is um, spread as in, out, say that again. Clustered as in like, uh, they give us 11, then they give us 12, and then they give us 14. Okay. So let me give you an example. In, in school, if you get the standard deviation of all grade 11s, the standard deviation will be low because you're all approximately the same height. But if you take the standard deviation for a whole school, because you have like grade eights and you have grade sevens and those things, the standard deviation will be higher because on average, there's more variance in that data set. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Let's learn how to actually calculate it first. And then I'll take more questions. Okay. So let's go with the calculator. And I have a data set. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I want you to do two and go mode and you click two. So I'll do that again. I went mode. Oh, let me do it again. because You can see the stat mode is on, but mode two. And then you're going to hit one for variance. And you get that. Give me a thumbs up in the chat if you're with me so far. Okay, now I have to put the dot in. So how do I do that? Well, I go three, five, six, and then I go equals, then I go two, five, six. You can do this with me as I'm going through it. Seven, two, one, four, eight, five, five, two, five, one, two, one, four, five, eight. Six five zero seven four three two one nine six one three eight six five. 
Awesome. And you can see here, I've got 12 data items. And you can see that makes sense because it's three by four. Now, that moment you will be waiting for, you hit AC and you may think, oh my goodness, I've lost all my data, but you haven't. You now go shift and you go one. Because you can see that yellow stat on the one key and you get to this um, screen. Okay. Now, this is going to do a whole bunch of things. If you wanted to go back to your data, you would press two, but you don't want the min and max. What you want is the variance, the, the variance calculations. So you click four and you have a bunch more choices. Now, let me explain what each of these is. N is the number of items. So if you hit one, you're going to get 12. If you hit two, you're going to get the mean, okay, which actually is part of this question, but we'll come back to it. The one you want to hit is three, which is the standard deviation. You can ignore the four. The SX is something called the sample standard deviation. You don't need that. We're going to use three. So I hit three. It looks like an apple to me. You see like an apple with a little core hanging out. So hit three, and then we go equals. We should get that. Now, give me a thumbs up in the chat if you get 220. I'm going to do this again now in a moment. You're all going to do it again. We're going to do it together, but let's just practice for now. Okay, now here is what, if you're unsure, don't worry. I'm going to do it again. But the magic of this is you've got your answer, right? 220.20. But what you can also do is if you want to find the mean for this collection, all you do is you go shift and you hit one again. Okay, so shift and then one. And now I'm going to hit four again because I'm going to go var. And if I want the mean, I'm just going to hit two. So if I look here, I hit two and I get 501. So the mean is going to be 501. Now, I'm going to do another example for those who feel a bit confused. You can go back and watch the recording, but I think it makes sense to do another one like this. So let's do another one. And I want you to try and do it by yourself first. I will show you the first step. The first step is you need to clear your data. So we go to mode. And what I do is I just change it. Like if I go to stat now and I go to one, okay, it is clear. So if you look at that mode stat, so let me actually do it so everyone can see. I go mode, two for stat, and then one for var. Now I'm going to put five equals. Uh, Keisha, can we unmute Keisha? Um, hi, sir. Hey, how can I help? Um, so I think it's best if you show them how to clear all the data. Okay. Well, if you want to clear, clear the data, or one of the quickest ways to do it is just to go into computation mode. So mode, if you click one, you'll see the stat thing has gone away, right? If you go back mode, stat, and you go one, you think it's completely clear automatically. And so I'm going to go five equals... 10 equals 7 equals 12 equals 0 equals 20 equals 15 equals 22 equals 8 2 equals. Now, this is the magic step, right? You have faith and you click AC. Now you go shift. One, and you'll see the yellow stat thing. And what do I have to hit next? Think of VAR. You can think of Jamie Varney. I don't know if you watch football, but or VAR, you know, or I don't know, something if you um so four for VAR. And then think of the apple, the thing that looks like an apple there. It's three. And we get six point eight nine, which is on the options there. Tando, what is your question? So, I yeah, we don't have to put the numbers from smallest to biggest. No, 
Lovely question. Tanda was asked a great question. For the standard deviation, why, you know, notice how it didn't matter that I didn't put it in the, in from smallest to biggest. Your calculator does it automatically. And so that is wonderful. Thank you, my calculator. So yeah. let us try and do one, one more of these. Great question, Tando. Thank you so much. Um, let's try and find the standard deviation of these end of your marks. And remember, you have to make sure your data set is clear. And I'm going to give you, you're going to fly solo on this. Uh, I can do. So Kishani, do you mean like uh, with a table? So if I go mode, uh, let me go stat one. I can see my data set is clear. And now this is basically just a collection of values. So I go 23 equals. And then I go 37 equals. Now, all I'm doing is I'm literally just reading in the data. 49 equals. 56 equals. 63 equals 63 equals 70 equals 72 equals 82 equals okay so now i've logged my data uh then go ac the data is still saved i go shift stat i get this lovely menu and i go to var and then I go to the Apple, well, I shouldn't say Apple, it's the symbol is Sigma, but it's the standard deviation. And I get 16.87, which when rounded off should be what option? It should be C, yes, it should be C. Okay, now for bonus points, can you find me the mean? So this is a, a bunch of friends who scored on their mass marks. Um, I want to know what is the average or the mean for all these results. And I want you to do it not manually. I want you to use the calculator function. Um, okay, and Dudu, we must have a look. We're gonna carry on with more calculator work in the next lesson. So it might be that you're not in stat mode. So if you don't see the stat thing here, it won't open it up. That could be the problem. So you have to get mode and go into stat mode. I'll show you one more time now. But before I do that, let me go shift stat. Then I go var. And I want the mean. I'm going to hit two. And then I hit equals. And it, to me, the average of this class was 56%. That's the class average um, of this. Okay. Now, just to go back to Mdudu's question, how do I... If you're having problems, you can always reset your calculator. Now, at the moment, most of the time, we live in this land where it's, it, this is a D here. And if you hit mode and then you hit two, and then you're in stat mode, you hit one, you'll notice that it says stat. Now you can put data in. And then once you've put your data in, okay, you, click, you hit AC. And now when you hit shift stat, you should get a menu. Okay, um, and then while we are doing that, um, Kia, if you could just put the link to this week's quiz in the chat. We're almost finished except for final questions today. So Kotso, what is your question? So I want to understand this question. It says try to do it yourself without using the standard deviation calculator. How do we do it? Uh -huh. Okay. So that is a slightly different situation. You need the mean, okay? So before, what you do for the standard deviation is you always basically write down all the values. Okay, I'm not gonna go in perfect detail, but I'll give you the idea, right? So you have the values over here. Sometimes they call those XI. And then you also need the mean, and you need to know how far on average these are apart. So that's the way your table starts. So for example, in this one, the very first value would be 23. Now we worked out that the mean was 56, okay? What's the difference between these two? Well, it's just gonna be 56 minus 23, okay? So you're gonna fill in what, what that thing is, okay? Which is 
36 minus 23. So you get 33. And you keep doing that for every data point. Okay, but once you've done that, that's not by itself enough. Again, if you, if you, 99% of the time, you don't have to do this manually here. Yeah? You do it with your calculator unless you absolutely forced to, and it's not something that happens often. But basically what you have to do is this bit is the difference. Then you have another column where you square the differences, and then you add all the differences up. You divide by the number of items in the collection, and then you square root that. Now, I'm not going to go into, into massive detail right now, but what I, I'm going to say is, can you see the steps? Subtract the data point minus the mean, then find the differences for every point, then score them, then add them up, divide by the number of items, and then square root. But that is a much, much, it's not super common anymore. Okay, so I don't want people to stress out about that, and it's definitely not in your quiz this week. But I hope that so that gives you a bit of an in into what kind of is going on there. Your calculator is doing all of this for you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Everyone, I think you've done fantastically well.